Hi, I'm Darren Walker. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Baseball, I sit down with head coach Tony Robichaux to preview the upcoming week in Raging Cajuns Baseball. And later, infielder Hanson Monica breaks down the origin of his name, what it feels like to hit a home run, and more. But first, head coach Tony Robichaux joins me to discuss the weekend series versus UT Arlington. You're watching Inside Louisiana Baseball. Welcome to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Darren Walker joined, as always, by the head coach, Tony Robichaux. And coach, uh, this week was really kind of a microcosm of the whole season. Uh, you, you had some momentum coming off the weekend with the two wins at South Alabama. Um, and then you get the win against LSU. Uh, you rode that momentum with, to, to that win. And then uh, you get swept at Arlington. So just kind of summarize the week and, and how that's gone. Well, you know, the, the, the bottom line, I think, is that in Friday night's games are so important because they, they kind of set like a tempo, really, mm -hmm. for the weekend. And, um, you know, we, we had that game won, and we, we put ourselves in a good position. The hitters did a good job, and we had a four-run lead going into the eighth with Gunner coming out of the pen. So you felt – we felt really good. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, you know, we, we they cut us in the eighth, but we still go back in the ninth with a one-run lead, and then we get a uh, ground ball double play that could end the game, and uh, we just didn't handle it properly. And uh, because of that, you know, they end up, you know, beating us by one run, and then we kind of just didn't recover after that. You know, throughout the whole season, you know, with so many injuries we've had and losing seven pitchers to the Major League Baseball draft in the last two years, we knew we'd have some inconsistencies. And uh, the biggest thing that we fight throughout this whole season is being consistent, and we knew that. And um, for a while, you know, our bullpen settled down a little bit uh, after the seventh inning because that's been the biggest issue we knew going into this season, especially after game three, uh, our closer blew out his, his UCL and had to have Tommy John surgery. So that even put more stress on the mm -hmm. back end of the game. And, you know, and I asked Darren uh, at, at UTA what the difference was in this year's season because they're having a very good season. He said, it's really simple. We got a closer and he's 15 for 15 in saves. And when you got a guy coming out of the back of that bullpen, it just, it can, it can you know, we had Demo, uh, uh, we were really, really good and stoky, and we lost all those guys to the draft. And so because of inconsistencies, all three games we let get away from us after the seventh inning. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's kind of what happened to us kind of early, mm -hmm. but then we kind of settled it down, then it kind of kicked up again. So we're going to have to try to, you know, get it settled back down. We're going to reroute our rotation this weekend. Finally, we get a chance to, to fix it. Um, Brandon will come out on Friday, and then we'll have Jack on Saturday. We'll We'll put Perrin in the pen with us, and then we'll just wait and get to Sunday and see where we're at. So I think that's going to help us. Um, hindsight, you know, maybe could have gave Gunner one more day's rest. His recovery sometimes takes a little longer than normal, but he was, has four days rest off 27 pitches, and we thought that was enough. But we still had a chance to win that mm -hmm. game. You know, we kick a double play at mm -hmm. the end, and um, and then the next Saturday we pitched good enough all the way again to the seventh. Brandon threw well enough to win. Jack threw well enough to win. So the starting pitching was good. It was just the back end of the bullpen. Right. So let's uh, look at the week, uh, review the week. Uh, Tuesday night you played in the Wally Pontiff uh, Classic against mm -hmm. LSU. Uh, you got up, get, got out early to a two nothing lead, and then you get the double steal that puts you up three nothing. So we seeing a more concerted effort in the second half of the year to maybe get the guys in motion, put some pressure on the defenses. Well, you know, we we our stolen bases are really high. We've run the bases well all year. Um, the, the one thing that's going to happen when you do steal and, and get it really aggressive is you're going to get thrown out from time to time. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to be willing to put up with it. You know, Ricky Henderson broke Major League Baseball's record for stolen bases, but he also set uh, the record for being thrown out. Right. So there's no way you can steal second base and keep your foot still on first base. And so there are going to be times where we're going to get thrown out, but for the most part, that's been really good for us all year. We've been very aggressive. Our stolen bases are, are, are up high. When that happens, you're sitting at second and third more. You can stay out of the double play more. So we've been aggressive all year, and that was just an opportunity there to to, to run the double steal if they threw to second. Uh, we always go on the release of the ball out of the catcher's hand, and uh, they, they both executed it really well. 
So uh, you had the 3-0 lead. LSU comes back to take a 5-3 lead. But then uh, later on, Oren Veillon just absolutely crushes a, a, by, a ball that was high in the zone. Uh, and then um, uh, Hanson Monica follows it up with a back-to-back, -back and you take the 6-5 lead. Well, it's the same thing with power. You know Babe Ruth set the home run record, and he also set the strikeout record. Mm -hmm. And so um, very rarely do you see power without strikeouts. Um, and so uh, Oren can strike out from time to time, mm -hmm. but if you make a mistake, he can also you know, make you pay. And mm -hmm. um, they, they, they got something up. You know, up in the zone, and he got it up, got it out of the ballpark, and uh, that ball, that ball would have went out of a lot of ballparks. But the wind was blowing out to left field, so you had to try to pitch accordingly throughout the ball game and try to bring the hitter into the wind instead of with the wind. And they left something up middle and up a little bit to where he could get it up and get it out of there, and it kind of changed the momentum of the game. Right. Uh, Jacob Schultz comes out of the pen, and he was just really, really good. Uh, four innings. Uh, four strikeouts, no runs, and really the big reason why you were able to hold on to that 6-5 win. Well, he's got a really good sinker, and what we didn't want was they've got some guys that can get the ball out of the ballpark, and the wind was blowing out, and so the best way to try to defend that is to bring in somebody that's got a sinking fastball, and then now you know that the, they're only going to get to the top half of the ball, not the bottom half, because we didn't want them to get a ball out of the ballpark, because anything out the left field, if you get it up, was probably going to get out of there. And so he came in and kept the ball down, stayed below their bats really well, and ate up some innings for us right there, because again, you know, um, we, we after him, you're looking at freshmen, and that's a you know very tough place to pitch for freshmen. And uh, we were lucky. Um, Cook did come in and, and do his job in the brief stint that he was in as a freshman. Um, but we were also fortunate, you know, we started a redshirt freshman that night, mm -hmm. and then we came in with another freshman, and then Schultz came in. He's only a sophomore. You know, he left JC after after his freshman year. So we were able to go in there and, and be able to beat a good LSU team with uh, basically two freshmen and a sophomore. Right. So uh, we, we talked about the UTA series a little bit already. Um, you talked about that eighth inning uh, when Gunner came in. Like you said, you had to feel pretty good about your chances at that point. But ultimately, you did get the ground ball that you were looking for. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, you just mm -hmm. couldn't make that double play. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, how frustrating is it for not not necessarily you, but for the team to be, you know, just that close to getting it done? And well, they call baseball a game of inches, right? So, I mean, that's what it is. And um, it's not only frustrating for us, but our fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, you sitting right there, ground ball double play ends the game. And then now you, you continue to feel good about yourself and you've got some momentum. And then you're kind of playing with house money now, you know, because in baseball, the, the key is you want to win two out of three every weekend. I mean, that's, that's your ultimate goal. If you get the first two in order, then, you know, go mm -hmm. be greedy and work to, to, to try to sweep. Sweeping a three-game series is very, very hard because you, you've got to hit three days, you've got to pitch three days, you've got to play defense three days. And in baseball, you win a third and lose a third. No matter how good you are, you're going to lose a third of your game. So you have to try to not to let one loss turn you into tailspins. That's what gets you in baseball. Um, if you look, whoever wins the World Series this year in Major League Baseball, they're probably going to have 60 losses. Mm -hmm. And so you have to think about that for a minute. They're the world's greatest team, and they went to bed 60 nights a loser. Mm -hmm. So in our profession, you go to bed many nights a loser. And what you have to be able to do is not let it send you into long pronounced tailspins and that's why that game one is so important on Friday nights we haven't been successful there because our All-American is not our Friday night starter anymore due to injuries and uh, that has changed the complexion of our team and so when you get dumped on Friday like that um, it, 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 it's tough you got to work to come back one good thing is this team's been good at being able to come back on Saturday and Sunday right. and we did come back Saturday it was only a one-run lead but mm -hmm. we had a four to three lead mm -hmm. and then again after the seventh you know the game gets away and then Sunday the same thing the starter comes out does a good job again probably didn't score enough runs on Sunday you know we hung in there with one run one run one run throughout the ball game then we finally made a push but in the eighth, we let the game get away so that when we did make our push, it was irrelevant. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was the back end of the bullpen that really hurt us this weekend. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we introduce you to first baseman and catcher, Hanson Monica. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. 
There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. Truly there is something for everyone here, from moving image arts, to nursing, to petroleum engineering, to education, to uh, voice, to photography, to political science, to anthropology, to sociology. I just, I can't list the almost hundreds of opportunities that students have to find the perfect fit and the major that best represents what they would love to do. We have alternate certification programs, master's programs, doctoral programs, in addition to hybrid and online classes. So a student can definitely find his or her passion um, as far as what they want to do. Not only are we going to find the major that is the best fit for our students, but we're going to make sure they graduate. We have one of the highest graduation rates in the state, and among our student athletes, in fact, we have the highest in the Sun Belt Conference. Knowing that UL Lafayette has one of the top graduation rates in this state makes me feel much more secure in my decision to come here, and it makes me feel very excited and confident for my time after I leave campus. We have everything here to be able to make sure uh, that the students have the support they need as they go through the process. From a writing center that'll look over papers and proof freedom for you, uh, to free tutoring services that students can walk in on demand and say, physics is not my thing, um, can you please give me a little bit of help? Uh, we have prep classes for the GRE, we have prep classes for for the LSAT. Uh, we look at medical school and pre-med and law school and business school. We have MBA programs. We have many, many PhD programs um, so that students can uh, further their education as they progress. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Time now to meet the man with the most unique name on the team, Handsome Monica. Handsome was not my birth name. Uh, everyone thinks that's what I was born with and that's been my name for my entire life, but actually I was, I was born Donald Ray Monica. Uh, and as I grew up, my mom just never really cared for the name. Uh, she always just called me handsome as a nickname. And that's what everyone else called me as well as I grew up. And eventually I, even, I started to forget that my first name was really Donald Ray because everyone just called me handsome. So about, I think I was 12 or 13, my parents went in and legally changed it for me because I wasn't old enough yet. And they made handsome legally my first name and made my middle name Enrique Ray and kept Monica. So legally now my name is Handsome Enrique Ray Monica. Baseball started when I was five, six, like most other kids. Uh, T-ball, just hit and throw with my dad. And I used to, I actually used to be an athlete. Uh, I used to play football, basketball, baseball and everything. And as I grew up, uh, just kind of Baseball started to take all my attention and I dropped all other sports and I actually wasn't good enough to play basketball or football or any other sport so I kind of just gravitated towards baseball. When I was 12 years old, I was 5'10", 200 pounds. I had reached 200 pounds when I was 12 years old and I, you know, I wasn't overweight. I was just, I was a big kid and that's when I really, I started to realize I had a lot of power and um, but I'll be honest, as I grew up, everyone kind of caught up with me, but, you know, 
I was able to keep a little bit of my power and, and uh, you know, but it was about 12 years old I realized, man, I, you know, I could do something with this. I knew I could play baseball at the collegiate level when I believe I was a eighth grader or ninth grader and uh, I was playing for a team out in Atlanta and we had went to uh, Georgia Tech to hit some BP and that was, they had given me an offer and I believe I was a freshman in high school and I, me and my dad, we left after that and he looked at me and he was like, this is a big deal, like that's, that's good, like I'm proud of you and I had no clue what the offer even meant. I, had, I was barely a freshman in high school and he was like, this is a big deal, son, you need, to, you need to keep going with this. So I feel like it was that moment I was like, you know, I could do something with this sport. What it feels like to hit a home run. Uh, the minute you see that ball go over the fence, and you don't have to run anymore. You just get it. You just got a jog. It's just uh, butterflies going throughout your entire body, and it's just a really good feeling. I I, I can't explain it honestly. I, I don't even I don't even know what adjective to use for that would be. Um, honestly, for me, I just I get excited because I don't have to run anymore. I just get to jog because I get tired out. But other than that, I mean. It's just a really good feeling hearing your teammates yell for you, hearing the fans get loud, uh, knowing that you just did a job for your team, that you, you took pressure off the pitcher uh, by adding runs uh, for your team. It's just, overall, it's just a really good feeling. The fan base is incredible. Uh, they come out every game, regardless, regardless if it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, a Sunday. Uh, they come out every day. And whether we're winning, losing, playing well, not playing well, they're there. They're there to support. The last two weeks, actually, I've had other players come up to me from other teams that come to our stadium. They're like, man, this, this environment is just awesome. And two different teams had told me, like, this is way better than Alex Box. Like, they might get a little more, they may get more fans, but the environment here is just so different. It's, it's, it's so much better. We love it out here. And that's the away team. They're the ones, you know, getting yelled at by our fans and stuff like that. But uh, it's just good to know we got a really big fan base behind us, win or lose. Coach Robe is one of the best coaches I've ever had. Uh, playing for him, it's changed my life. Not only as a baseball player, but as a man, I've grown up in many aspects of life. Uh, I'm not the same kid I used to be two years ago. Uh, but playing for Coach Robe, it, it's great. I mean, I go out on the field. I do what I have to do personally for myself. I do what I need to do for my brothers, my teammates. And I also play for Coach Robe. I, I, I know how much work he puts in. I know what he does behind the scenes that not everyone else sees. And it makes me, as a as a man, as a player, want to want to play for him. I, I want to I want to do right for this program with the little time I have for Coach Robe. How far can this team go? If you're just a regular person looking at our statistics, our our record, you know, you might think, oh, it's over for them. But unless you're really in in the dugout in the locker room, this team can go far as long as we stick together and we do what we we know what we're capable of doing. This team has a chance. It really does. Next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we look at the week ahead with head coach Tony Robichaux. Intact! Intact! Together! Together! This! This! F! F! Tell! Tell! Intact! Intact! are allowed to you know be our own person and we can talk to our professors and talk to our teachers and if we need help at all you know there's somebody there and not even just with your professors with other student organizations and that kind of stuff you're in a family you know like this is your family and and you feel like that whenever you come here you don't just get lost in a crowd actually the student to faculty ratio is only about 22 to 1 so we know what you want to do with your life we know what your majors are we know what your goals and dreams your career aspirations uh, the problems that you might have and so we're able to work one-on-one -on -one with you a lot more than you might expect 
Uh, once you get here, we put you out into experiences that you will see as parallels in the real world. So if you're taking a political science course on the law, we're going to go and observe the courtroom. If you're taking a, a nursing class, you're going to go into the hospital. If you take an education class, then you're going to go into a school. We're going to make sure that you know what you're doing before you get to that next step. One reason I was drawn to the university is the people. They actually care about the university. They feel like it's the best university in the world. So naturally, if the people here feel like that, then you're gonna naturally feel like that once you get here. It's just the energy that they have around here. Everything is about raging cages and it's the best place to be. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Darren Walker, once again, joined by the head coach, Tony Show, And one last midweek game of the season, you're going to go to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, to face Southern Miss, uh, a team that you guys beat on a walk-off home run earlier this year. Uh, the Eagles are coming off of a sweep of UNC Charlotte, so they're playing some pretty good baseball right now. But I really think at this point you're probably more concerned about the guys in your dugout than in theirs. Yeah, we've always done that. You know, I've always – told our team, you know, our, our, our biggest enemy is us. It's not the team sitting across from us. And uh, so we try to stay focused on us. What we want to try to do is have a good workout today. We got a day of rest yesterday, which was really good. We didn't get back till 1.30 in the morning from Arlington mm -hmm. off of a tough weekend. So uh, that day of rest fell, I think, at a good time. So we need to have a good workout today and then get ready for them. Uh, we did beat them here, but it was a close game. Uh, they have been playing well. Um, they, they're coming off good weekend like you said and at their ballpark it's always a tough place to play so it gives us a good opportunity to go back into a tough situation and 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 uh on, on a tough road trip and then uh try to continue to to get weathered and get through it and if we can get a road win that would give us some momentum going into the weekend gotcha back to russo park this weekend texas state comes to town bobcats 27 and 13 on the season 12 and 6 in the Sun Belt which is good for second in the West Division. Now, they're hitting 282 as a team, which is second in the conference. Uh, they lead the conference in uh, triples and doubles, walks. I believe they're second in walks. So uh, the guys on the mound are going to have their work cut out for them this week. Yeah, they're going to have to pitch well. You know, they do swing the bat well. They kind of like UTA, and um, that's why both of them are, are towards the top. And uh, so, But we in our ballpark, we at home. Um, you know, the big key when you face good hitting teams is you've got to get off the field when you can get off the field, and you got to try to get the guys out. Uh, in front of and back of their best hitters. And, you know, look at South Alabama. We let their best hitter do some damage on Friday mm -hmm. night, but then we cut him out of the loop on Saturday and, and Sunday. And those next two games, we were able to win those games because we got the guys out in front of their good hitters. And so that's what we're going to have to do. We are rerouting our rotation. So we got Brandon coming out on Friday and Burke coming on Saturday. We've been wanting to do that, but never really could do it. You know, we got out of the shoot with Brandon only having one star with uh, the labrum injury that he had coming out of junior college his sophomore year. So that plagued him a little bit. Now we got him up and running. Jack Burt, uh, we couldn't start him early in the year until we could get him up and running. Then he ran into a five-day 
uh, virus mm -hmm. that, that uh, we had to reroute the rotation again to get him on the back end of it, to get him some time to, to get back healthy. And so then we hit the early push-up games this weekend because of Easter. So it's just been so hard to try to line this up properly. And so now we finally got a chance this weekend to move Brandon up and Burke up, put Perrin in the pen with us to try to help us after the seventh inning. And then we'll let uh, Sunday just be TBA after we get through Friday and Saturday. Yeah, the, the Bobcats can hit. They can also play defense and pitch. Uh, they lead the conference in team ERA, and they have the best fielding percentage uh, in the conference. So uh, not, not only do they come at you uh, at the plate, but also on the mound. Well, you know, the, the big thing is, is there's three things you have to do in baseball. You know, you have to pitch, you have to hit, and you have to play defense. And whoever's left standing for a while, you know, if you do two things out of the three, you'll hang on for a while but you're eventually going to get knocked out by somebody that can do all three. Right. And when you look at the guys that are standing in Omaha, those eight teams, they do all three. Mm -hmm. And there's no way you can just do one. You can do one for a while. You can do two for a while, a little longer. But if you can do all three, those are those are the teams that can left standing and that's what's hurt us this year. We've been inconsistent. You know, sometimes we hit, sometimes we don't, sometimes we pitch. For the most part, we've played good defense throughout the season. It's just every once in a while we'll make what's called a critical era mm -hmm. because we're in close ball games because we don't score a lot of runs. And that one era, if you're scoring eight, nine runs a game, that one botched double play ball doesn't hurt you. But when you got a one-run lead in the bottom of the ninth in somebody else's ballpark, that double play is critical. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what's hurt us all year and led to a lot of our inconsistencies. 13 games left in the regular season, 12 of those Sunbelt Conference games, so we'll see if the Cajuns can improve their seating as we get closer to the postseason conference tournament. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, a look at the upcoming schedule. The Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors' Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. University of Louisiana at Lafayette, our raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. Thanks for joining us this week on Inside Louisiana Baseball. Time now to look at the week ahead. <laughs> 